In this video, I'm going to explain to you how you use lexicon to explore vocabulary. In your weekly homeworks, you will have tasks to investigate certain words using lexicon. So here's how you do it. For the last few years across the Federation, we've been looking at how we teach vocabulary and we've done lots of research, all of which points to the fact that the explicit teaching of vocabulary, so really focusing on looking at what words mean, where those meanings come from, can have a really positive effect on overall literacy levels, so on your reading and on your writing skills. So we developed what we've called lexicon to help you to study vocabulary yourselves or with the help of your teacher. It's called lexicon because your lexicon, without the H, your lexicon is the word that means the vocabulary that you have. And the diagram is made up of hexagons. So we called it le hexicon, lexicon. So each of these stages, there are six stages that you can go through when you're looking at a particular word. You don't have to go through all of them, but if you do, then you'll have a really thorough understanding of that particular word. So I'm going to take you through each stage and explain what each one involves. So I always start with the morphology at the top. Now morphology, if you look at that word, ology, if you have the suffix ology at the end of a word, that means the study of. So if you think about biology, if you think about astrology, ology means the study of something. And morph, if you think about um, if a character in maybe a superhero movie morphs into something else, it means that they change shape. And morph means shape. So morphology, when you put that together, is the study of shapes. And specifically, the study of shapes in a word. So you look at, therefore, the parts of that word. So just like we've just done, Morphology has two parts, ology and morph. So your first job is to get your word and see if you can recognize any parts of that word. Break it down into two, three, maybe even four parts. Which parts do you recognize like we would recognize ology? And then equally, which parts are unknown to you? Which parts don't you know? So that's your first job. Break that word down into blocks. As an example, I've chosen the word trigonometry, which you will know from maths. So if we look at the morphology of trigon trigonometry, the, the parts that make it up, the first part, I do recognize tri, I recognize, I recognize that from triangle, tripartite, triple, and I know that tri means three. So I know that bit. So I know that this word trigonometry has something to do with three. Um, the middle bit, gono, I don't know. I'm not sure about that. I'll have to look that up. But the last bit, the metry bit, I know what that means. It means to measure because I've seen that ending in the words optometry, which is what opt opticians um, practice. I've seen it in symmetry. I know the word metric. I know geometry. So I know that metry at the end of a word means to measure. So this is something to do with measuring three things. The middle bit is the bit I need to explore. But do you see how by using morphology, by breaking down that word into parts, I'm pretty much almost there with my understanding of what this word actually means, just by looking at those blocks that I am aware of and that I do recognize. So if there is a bit you don't know, this is where etymology comes into play. And etymology, as you can see, we've got an ology there, so we know it's the study of something. And it's actually the study of the true sense of a word. In other words, its origins or derivation. This is where the word actually came from. So to look up the part of the word you don't know, in which case it's the gono bit in trigonometry, you can use a website called etymonline.com and your teachers will have been using this in class with you um, in English and uh, I imagine in other subjects as well. And on that website, it's brilliant. You can basically go into it and type any word you like and it will give you the full explanation of where that word comes from. So having gone to look on Etym Online, it tells me that the gono part in trigonometry comes from the root genu or genu, 
which originally, so this is pretty cool, meant knee. So if you look at the word knee, gani, kani, gnu, kani, gnu, kani, it's not far off. Um, and the word knee um, is linked into the word angle. So it kind of came from the same place. The word knee came from the same place as angle, both from the root gnu. So if you think about then looking at other words with that gon or gono word in it, you've got polygon, pentagon. Well, pentagon, penta means five. So a pentagon must have five, not knees, but angles. A polygon, poly means many. So a polygon must have many angles. So now I look back at trigonometry and I can pretty much work out, therefore, what it is that we're measuring three of. So this is where we move on to what we call semantics. Semantics is all about the meaning of words and it's all to do with the signs um, that are given by those parts of the words. Um, now, we knew that try meant three. We knew that metri meant measure. We now know that the gone bit means angle. Therefore, trigonometry is the measurement of angles in a triangle. Semantics sorted. So the next hexagon in lexicon is the syntax hexagon. And this means, syntax means the placement of words in a sentence. So it's where the word would go. In order to know where to place a word, you need to know what type of word it is. So trigonometry, because it's a thing, it is a noun. So I know that in my sentence, I'm going to put it either with a verb or maybe with an adjective. So I could say, therefore, I studied trigonometry. Trigonometry is interesting. I know the etymology of trigonometry. For nouns, it's fairly straightforward with where you would put them in a sentence. Where syntax gets interesting is when you've got a verb and you have to look at the different verb endings and different tenses. That's where you can really develop your knowledge of that word even further by looking at how it would fit into different types of sentences. The next hexagon is orthography. Now, orthography means to write correctly. So it literally means how you spell the word. Ortho, interestingly, means correct. So when you think about an orthodontist, an orthodontist corrects the placement of teeth. If you think about um, orthopedics or orthopedic shoes, they're about correcting um, children's spines or correcting children's posture. So in order to spell something correctly, the number one way that you will learn most effectively is if you apply the morphology rule. So break it down into the suffix and the prefix. And when you do that, because you know metri, because you know tri, because you know anti or pro, you'll recognize parts of the word and you'll know how to spell those. So you can break the word down into the parts that you need. The root part of the word will usually be the bit that is unknown. And um, that's usually the bit that you'll need to work on. But I have done a spelling video with rules for um, some of these roots that might help you. So do watch that to assist. But orthography, there are various ways you can go about remembering spellings and they're all in that video. So hopefully some of those will help. But the number one way is to break it down into its constituent parts. Break it down into the blocks and spell them one by one. And the last hexagon that we need to work through is probably the most fun, and that's phonology. So phonology, ology, again, is the study of, and phono means sound. So if you think about headphones, microphone, phono is all about sound. And when we talk about spelling, often people will say, um, if you spell something phonetically, you might what that means is you've spelt it how you would say it. So you've spelt a word in the way that it would come out of your mouth. The way that we say something doesn't always match how we spell it, which is why this is separate to orthography. But phonology is just as important. If you're going to use a word out loud, you need to be able to say it correctly. And my classes always know this story. But when I was at university, I was 20 years old before I'd used the word 
melancholy out loud. I had to think about it then. I'd always pronounced it melancholy because I'd only ever read it. I'd never heard it out loud. So I said it out loud in a um, seminar at university and it's very embarrassing. So phonology is important. So in class, what your teacher will often get you to do is speak these words out loud. And what we'll do is, is help you spell it phonetically so you can write it out as you would say it. So I've put here trigger nom a tree. Trigger nom a tree is how I would remember how to say this word. Um, you can have little pictures to help you remember it if you need to. So ask your adults in your house. But for this one, you might have the late, great Roger Peck with a knife and fork tucking into a tree. He's nomming a tree. So hopefully you can see how lexicon might help you. You will become familiar with different suffixes and prefixes of words by looking at the morphology. Root words will become part of your lexicon. You will learn these words. Um, I could now tell you the roots of lots of words just because I've been looking at them over and over again for the last few years. So most words I can figure out and you will be able to do that too. The more you use lexicon, the more you explore the background of words, the morphology of them, the etymology, you will be able to start identifying the meaning of words that you've never seen before, or you'll at least be able to make an educated guess. So looking back at trigonometry, because we knew tri and because we knew metry, we knew it was something to do with the measurement of three of something. And it was only a small step to get to understanding the whole word. So in your homeworks each week or each fortnight, if you're in year seven and eight, you will be asked to use lexicon to explore two or three words. Do make the most of this opportunity. Ask your teacher for help if you need it. But watch this video, work through step by step along with me, if you like. And hopefully you'll explore and find some really cool things about words that you can share with me and your teachers. Thanks for watching.